Today I'm going to show you how I made these eyeball ornaments for my Christmas tree. If you would like to buy one, I have some for sale. I will link the website in the description box. I have sold out of the greens, but there are still blue and brown eyes left. The realistic half eyeballs I bought on eBay. The designed purpose is for a thing called a reborn doll. They're these hyper realistic creepy babies that people like making for some reason. So I bought a plethora of colors so that I would have some variation and now I'm going to sculpt the gory meaty part around it using Chavant NSP medium clay. I'm copying the shape of a real life reference image that I got from Mrs. and Jimmy's Instagram page which is of a guy who had to have his upper jaw removed from a tumor and they had to take the eye with it. If you are interested in seeing that let me know and I'll put a link up on Imager to my screenshot. So I get the basic shape roughed out just using my fingers and putting little rolled up balls and like globules I guess of texture over the entire piece. And I go in with a little sculpting tool to smooth all of the edges so that it looks like it's one thing. I got a little bit rough so I decided to use a little chef's torch like a butane torch you can buy for making like creme brulee and stuff and on a low setting I'm going to melt the clay which will give it this glossy shiny texture. Then I go in and retexturize it a little bit and drag some of that clay onto the eyeball using a little sculpting tool. Another way to smooth out the clay is using something called naphtha, it's basically lighter fluid. So I'm going in now with naphtha and a paintbrush to smooth it all out further and have a little bit more control than what I would have with a chef's torch. But naphtha is very bad to breathe in so I've got my gloves on and I'm wearing a respirator while I'm using this. All of this smoothing made it a little bit flat, so I'm adding in some more balls for a little bit of variation. Then I'm using a little rubber tipped tool and then the naphtha again to smooth it all back down into looking like it's one piece. Next I cleaned up the clay all around the edge of the sculpt, getting it ready for molding. Then I used that butane torch one last time to give it that smooth and glossy texture. Now to make the mold, I need to remove this eye. So I carefully go around the edge of a sharp sculpting tool and pop that eyeball out. And then I repair the edge a little bit with a sculpting tool. And then I put a large cup that I have cut in half over the sculpt to be the walls while I pour in my silicon. I'm using a hot glue gun to glue all the way around this so that the silicon doesn't seep out the bottom. Now I'm pouring in Pinky Sill Silicon, which is from Barnes, an Australian mold making company, and it's really, really good for molds like this. So I've mixed my A and B together and now I'm pouring it in from a high pour to try and minimize any air bubbles. After about half an hour that will have set and I'm going to remove my cup and then I'm going to remove that silicon from my clay sculpt. Now to get this ready for molding I'm going to be pouring silicon into silicon which means I have to have a really good release between the silicons or else it can bond to itself. So first of all I'm going to put in a layer of Vaseline with a chip brush to make sure I reach every nook and cranny. Then I'm going to let that sit for about 10 minutes and then remove the excess Vaseline with a tissue so that there's just a light layer of Vaseline over it but it's not so thick that it's going to obscure details or anything like that. Now I'm also going to put a layer of J-Wax release just to make sure that my two pieces will release and come apart. Now I'm mixing up my silicon to pour into the eye mold. I'm using Barnes Platzel Gel 10 and Dedna. I put in around 9 grams of part A, 9 grams of part B and then 9 grams of Dedna. This will give me a piece that's kind of of soft but that will hold its shape as a Christmas ornament. If I wanted it to be a prosthetic for a movie I would make it much much softer. Now to tint the silicon I'm going to be using some silicon pigments by Neils Materials and by Mold Life. I've got a little palette here of the pale flesh tone color from Neils Materials and red, white and blue from Mold Life. I start off by mixing in the red silicon pigment and then some of the light flesh tone pigment to get this pink muscly color and then I want to make it a little bit more cooler so I'm adding in just a very small amount of that blue pigment and then a little bit of that white pigment just to make the color slightly brighter. Once that silicon is thoroughly mixed in with the pigments and the deadener I pour it into my mold and then I use this flat scraper to scrape over the surface of the mold so that I have a flat back. After about half an hour my silicon is cured and I can remove it from my mold and I have an exact replica of what I had in clay but in a much softer more flesh like material. Now to glue in those acrylic eyes I'm putting a layer of prosade cream over the inside area of our silicon and on the back of the eyes as well then I allow it to dry clear and then I push both sides together. 
Now you can leave it at this step before you paint it, but I wanted to make a couple of alterations. So I mixed up a thickened version of Platzl Gel 10. So I mixed up Platzl Gel 10 A and B and I added some GP20 to thicken it. And then the same silicon pigments that I used to run these pieces so that I had a thick paste that I could put over this to correct any details. So I used that around the edge of the eyes to make sure that the seam of the acrylic eyes couldn't be seen and I also put some of this thickened silicon on the back of these pieces so that the backs wouldn't be completely flat so that they would have some kind of swells and like meaty texture put in just by just by hand instead of having that in the mold so that the mold making is much much easier. So the next step is adding some veins to our eyes to make them look a little bit more realistic and irritated. So I've got some red wool that I'm separating into tiny fibers to make it look like it's veins and capillaries and to make that stick to my acrylic eyeball I'm putting down a layer of of clear nail polish and then pushing the fibers into that. You could probably also use glue because I do put a layer of silicon over everything to seal it at the end anyway, but at the time I thought that clear nail polish would make sense. So I push that around the eye, but I try to keep it clear of the iris itself and then bring it down the sides of the silicon so that that can continue into the rest of the fleshy removed eye stuff. Now I'm going to add one layer of paint to make this look a bit more gruesome. Instead of adding just straight up blood red, I'm going to add something that's kind of between the pink color of the muscles and a dark red color so that it isn't fully saturated red, but it gives that illusion of trauma. The paint is made with silicon so that it will bond to the silicon eye. I'm using Smooth On Silpoxy and I've squirted some of that tube into my cup and then I've thinned it with naphtha so I'm wearing gloves and a mask while I'm doing this and then I've added in my silicon pigments to make that red color. I, I don't remember exactly what pigments I used but there would have been some red, some pale flesh tone, some blue, some brown, stuff like that. And it is really thinned down with naphtha to get these light washes of color. I'm using a cheap paintbrush because the silicon could very easily ruin this paintbrush forever. And I'm putting this darker color into the deepest parts of the sculpt. And then I'm using a tissue or a brush to remove the color from the high points so that it gives us a bit more contrast. Using a sewing needle, I've pushed some Christmas ribbon through the top of the eye flesh so that these can hang nicely off a tree. And to finish them off, to seal the paint job and to make it look really shiny and gooey and wet, I've mixed up a batch of Platzl Gel 10 and I've thinned it about 50% with naphtha so that it's this really liquidy silicon that I can dunk these eyepieces in to get a complete coating over them. And then I've left these to air dry for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Once that is dry, our Christmas ornaments are finished and you've got these really disgusting, gooey, surgically removed eyeballs so that you can get into the Christmas spirit and share the love, share the joy via your Christmas tree. This is the only tutorial for my Christmas ornaments in which I sculpt something. Everything else is taken from a life cast. So I will show that process in the next video, which will be going over how I made my feet stockings. Thanks for watching. I hope that you guys have a lovely Christmas and I will see you very soon with the next installment of the Christmas Gornaments. If you're not already subscribed, you can subscribe here and it will notify you when the next tutorial is live.